Good morning, Will and actually, and a very warm welcome to our assembly this week. I hope that you're all keeping well. I hope that you've had a really good week so far, and no doubt you're looking forward to the weekend as well. Well, I'm trying out a new computer today. I managed to damage mine, unfortunately, last week, and so it's the first time I've done a recording on it. So if anything looks different, that's why, and hopefully everything will work as it normally would do. So we've been looking at our Easter stories. We looked at those stories before Easter, thinking of the Palm Sunday when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that donkey, and everybody waved palm branches and shouted Hosanna, praising him. And then we thought about the Maundy Thursday with the bread and the wine and how Jesus broke those and shared them with his friends. And we then come to the Good Friday, the day that Jesus died on the cross because God loves us so much and Jesus loves us so much. And that Easter Saturday of the waiting, nothing happening and just wondering what is going to happen. And then finally we come to the Easter Sunday, the day when Jesus rose again. And all the stories that we've been looking at for the last few weeks have come from after Jesus rose again. So we can think about that Emmaus Road story, the story where those friends are walking and talking and this stranger joins them. And eventually, as Jesus breaks bread, they show that that is, they know suddenly that that is Jesus with them. And he's explained to them about the Bible, about who he is, as he walked and he talked with them. And then we had the story about those disciples in that room with the locked doors. But Jesus still came in and said, peace be with you, and gave them peace and showed them his hands and his side and the marks from the cross that were there. And then last week we thought about that story with the fish, about Peter going, I'm going to go fishing. And the disciples going, OK, we'll come with you. And so off they go to fish. And these are experienced fishermen. But they put their nets over one side and they get nothing after hours and hours and hours. And then the next morning, as dawn breaks, this person on the shore, this figure says to them, put your nets over the other side. And so they haul them up and they put them in over the other side. And sure enough, they have fish after fish after fish. Can you remember how many fish there were? There were 153 fish in that net. And as they hauled it back to shore, Peter gets into the water and races to see Jesus. And so our story starts on that shore today. And we're using a different animal today. We're using a sheep and a lamb today in our story. So no more fish, we're on to sheep today. Now it might be helpful before we get into the story to think a little bit about sheep and lambs and about why that's important in this story. I told you before that before coming to Yaxley, I lived in Shropshire, which is a very rural place with lots of farming. And so around me, most of the people were farmers. And I had people that lived after sheep and were shepherds and shepherdesses and people that farmed the land and many different things. And you may still have family members that do that today because we still have some farms around Yaxley and particularly in the Fens. But I, I learned quite a lot about farming in that place. And we know in the Bible that Jesus uses a lot of farming and sort of creation pictures to help us understand what he's trying to say to us. Well, there is a psalm, there's a book of psalms, which are sort of poetry, but sort of people pouring out their feelings to God about when they're really happy, about when they're really sad, about when they're really angry or when they're just really excited about something. And in those psalms is Psalm 23, and it's a psalm that we talk about quite often. And I may have talked about it at school, I can't remember. But it's a psalm that talks about God being our shepherd. And through everything that we go through, through the good and the bad, through those exciting times, those really difficult times, that we can remember that God is our shepherd. And so what is the role of a shepherd? Well, the role of a shepherd is to care for their sheep, to make sure that they stay safe. And there's a story in the Bible about how someone who looked after sheep left 99 sheep to go and look for the one sheep. But if we go back to that Psalm 23 picture, we think about how God is the shepherd taking care of everything that we need and we can get everything that we need from him. So there are lots of pictures in the Bible 
about a shepherd. Now I've got my own shepherd and sheep there. I don't know if you can see them. Because it's something that reminds me, it sits above my desk and it reminds me that God is my shepherd, that God cares about me and looks out for me and looks after me. And so that might just help you as we come into this story to understand why on earth we are talking about sheep. The Bible talks about sheep in lots of different places, but we're going to think about today in that way of the looking after the shepherd and the caring. Now, I've got an amazing book by a shepherdess and I love using it. And she talks about her role as a shepherdess and about the sheep. And she talks about how each sheep has a personality, it has a character. And we all have different personalities and characters. We have different gifts and skills that we have been given to use. And we've talked about that before. And the shepherd says that her sheep know when she's there. They know it's her. Sheep recognise a person. They can recognise quite a lot of people's faces, actually. But they know who they're looking to. They know that shepherd is their safe person. And that is what we should know about God, that God is our safe person. So let's think, remembering all of that about sheep and shepherds, let's think about our story today. And it starts back on the shore. They've brought all those 153 fish back to shore. They're sitting around a makeshift barbecue and they are having breakfast with Jesus. And our story starts with after breakfast. Now, we remember Peter in our story last week, one of the disciples, the disciple that was called Simon. And Jesus told him he was going to be called Peter, which means the rock. And he was going to build his church on Peter, not literally. OK, we're not talking about a physical building. We're talking about the body of people called the church. Now we have a conversation between Peter and Jesus in this story. And it involves sheep and shepherds. Now, Peter was a disciple who on Monday, Thursday, on that night after they've had that meal and Jesus was arrested. Peter was asked three times whether he knew Jesus. Now, Jesus had already told Peter that he was going to he was going to deny him. He was going to say that he didn't know who he was. But Peter said, no, Jesus, I will follow you anywhere. But we come to this situation where Jesus has been taken into the inner court and is being tried. And Peter is sitting outside around a fire. And three times he's asked, do you know Jesus? And three times he says, no, you are mistaken. I don't know Jesus. And so we come to this story today. And Jesus asks Peter a question. And he asks Peter a question saying, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. You know I love you. Now you might think, OK, fair enough. But Jesus doesn't stop there. Jesus asks him a second time, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, of course, Lord, you know I love you. You know I'd follow you and I'd do anything for you. Now you would think that really was sufficient then, wouldn't you? But a third time in this story, Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And Peter again says, and I think he's getting a bit cross by this point. He says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Now, Jesus responds to each of Peter saying, yes, I love you. He gives him an instruction. And instruction, the instruction is to feed my lambs. And then the instruction is to feed my sheep. Now, are we talking about actual sheep? Are we talking about Peter going out and becoming a shepherd and taking care of sheep? No, we are not. And when Peter was called, we go back to fish again at this point, because when Peter was called, he was a fisherman. And Jesus said, come and fish for people. And so here at the end of this gospel story, at the end of the book of John, that gospel, Jesus is saying to Peter, OK, you fish for people and now I want you to take care of them. Because in our story that we're going to hear next week, Jesus goes back to heaven at the ascension. But here Jesus is saying to Peter, I want you to be that shepherd. Oh, my crook stuck again. I want you to look after my sheep, my people, take care of them and give them what they need. 
Now that is a huge calling for Peter. Peter is being given all the people that Jesus loves. And who does Jesus love? Jesus loves everybody in the world without exception. That's a rather big task, isn't it? To take care and feed Jesus' sheep. And Peter at this point looks over at one of the other disciples. He looks over at John and he asks him whether or not John will be there when Jesus comes again. Because we remember that Jesus is going to come back a second time. And Jesus tells Peter not to worry about what's going to happen with John, but to concentrate on what Jesus has asked Peter to do, because my goodness, that is a big task. And sometimes we can get distracted by what other people are doing. We can think, oh, they're really good at that, or they're really good at this, and I'd really like to be good at that. But Jesus doesn't ask us to do what our friends are asked to do. Jesus doesn't ask us to be the people that those other people are because they come with their own gifts and their own skills, with their own problems and their own challenges. So here Jesus is preparing Peter for the ministry that he's going to have in the early church as being one of the first Christians and starting the church. And we're going to hear more about Peter over the next couple of weeks. Now, I love this story. I love this image again of remembering that God is our shepherd and that here Jesus on earth is giving that task to people, to us, to Christians, to care for other people. And gosh, isn't there a lot in the world that we need to be taken care of at the moment? There are people who are in really difficult situations. We can look at the news and think about people in India, people on in other places that are not necessarily hitting the news, but where COVID is still having a devastating effect. We can think about people who don't have food and clean water today. Or we can think about people around us who just need some encouragement, some care and some love. So today we are called to the same thing that Peter was called to, to be shepherds and to care. We're not called to be the person that Peter was with the gifts and skills that he had, but we are called to care for other people. And so we're going to have a moment of quiet as we think about this story. And we're going to think about, I wonder what Jesus would want me to do today. What role might he have for me? If I'm going to care for others, then what can I do? Or perhaps I have another job. And we'll find out in the books after the Gospels that actually people are given different tasks to do. So let's just think for the moment, just quietly about what are my gifts, what am I good at and what might I be able to do for Jesus today? So let's have a moment of quiet. And I wonder what you thought about in that time. Hold on to that and remember that. Don't forget it. Because God is very faithful and he gives us gifts and skills for a purpose and a time. And we might not be in that time yet, but at some point they will be needed. And so as we think about that picture of that shepherd, we think about sheep and caring for others and how God cares for us. Maybe you have something you want to pray for today, maybe a person or a situation, and you can pray that quietly in your head. And I'm going to pray out loud, so let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this story and for the story about Peter and what you called Peter to do. And you called him to care for your people. Such a big task. And today I pray that whatever we are doing, whoever we are, that we will know that you call us to do things as well. You ask us to do jobs and tasks. Help us as we go about our day-to-day -day routine at school, learning and playing and having fun and listening and talking. Help us to remember in all of that, that you have something that you want us to do, each individual person, but you want us to take care of each other as well. So help us as part of our wonderful school of William D. Axley to look out for each other and care for one another today. And we say together, Amen. 
it's been really lovely to be with you for another week again on video assembly but never mind we can at least do that so next week we're going to start to think about the stories that happen after all these easter stories and what they might mean for us today have a really great week whatever you're doing take care and stay safe and god bless bye